Hello and welcome back to another video on the Old Golden Black YouTube channel. I'm Tom Rouse and thank you for joining me again today. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any further updates. Now yesterday Wolves played another their second pre-season friendly against Victoria Pilsen. A very good performance again, a very secure defensive performance as well as going forward and it was a 2-1 win for the for the Wolves, which is great, but a number of performances need to be highlighted. But the two that I'm gonna really talk about First of all, I wanted to mention uh, Michael Zyro and say what a great comeback he's made and the perseverance and the mental attitude that he must have had to have over the last 18 months since his horrific injury. To see him back on the pitch is really, really pleasing and I hope that he uses this time to build up his fitness and then hopefully he won't be, it won't be forced upon him to be a really important part of the team. Hopefully he can dip in and out until he's fully fit and then hopefully around about Christmas time I'd imagine him to be able to really, really start affecting things. Uh, now, the main person I'm going to talk about after yesterday's performance is Jack Price. A number of reports from people at the game saying that again, because he played quite well against Werder Bremen earlier in the week, but again, a top performance from Jack Price. Now, when Nuno came in, he talked about wanting to improve the players that were already in the squad. I think Jack Price is a prime example of that happening. But we've seen him on a number of occasions come into a team, impress, and then dip out. He needs to make sure now under Nuno that he gets into this team and he stays in the team and he continues to perform at a high level. Whether or not he's capable of doing that, we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it consistently over a season. Under Jacket or Lambert, he's dipped in and out of both of those managers' ideas. I think the way the Wolves have set up so far in pre-season, he's got a place in that team alongside somebody like Neves, who was able to spray the ball really, really well. But I want to see Jack Price, who's somebody who is a Wolves fan and has been at the club since he was eight years old. I really want to see him trying his hardest, and I'm sure he is doing, and I'm sure that's why he's in Nuno's plans at the moment. But I want to see him really push on this season and be a consistent performer. Now, in terms of the formation, Wolves set up in a 3-4-3 again yesterday with Doherty and Douglas dropping back to join the defence when Wolves weren't in possession or where they were under attack. But they were able to carry the ball forward and get past the uh, the midfield and create a bit of width and extra attacking threat to the system. And that led to Matt Doherty scoring a goal from the back post, a nice tidy finish, first time shot. It also led to the first goal, which was Dicko again, which is great to see him on the score sheet for a second time this preseason, getting in to the six yard box and a little tap in there from a crossing from the wide uh, areas, which is fantastic. And that's what we were calling out for, for most of the second half of last season was a bit of width and a bit of expansive play. And that perhaps playing with the wing backs will put a little bit less pressure on players like Costa and Cavaliero and the other wide players because they'll be able to tuck inside a little bit more with the wing-backs going past them. So I think it seems to be quite an effective formation at the moment. We seem to be quite solid at the back with Bowley, Miranda and Bennett playing on Saturday. Bolly in particular, there's a couple of times we've taken the ball up to the halfway line. It seems to be quite a fast tempo to our passing as well, which is really good. It has led to a couple of goals. The goal against Werder Bremen came from a long passing move. But what I've noticed as well from watching the games is that the players off the ball are moving a lot more than we used to, which is fantastic and something that we've seen top clubs doing for a long time and we are now finally catching up. But that's that's the mentality that Nuno, a top manager, is going to bring to our club. Now, I've written down here about a plan B. Now, we've seen two games now with two forma with the same formation, 3-4-3. Three, three. Now, I'm not sure whether we will need a plan B because of the fluid nature of this uh, system. I do think as the season will go on, and when people suss out a way of playing against 3-4-3, three, three, which they inevitably will, what are we going to be able to do to counteract that and to continue winning games? Because, OK, we've won two games so far in pre-season, and that's fantastic, but we do have to bear in mind that the other two teams are at different stages of their pre-season. I know that Werder Bremen, the German Bundesliga, doesn't start for two weeks after the Championship, so they are some way behind us in that respect. Very, very confident and very positive reports coming out of Austria at the moment. I'm hoping that they're using this time as well to build a bit of squad unity because I think that lacked a little bit last season as well. Now in terms of transfer rumours, there's been a very unreliable source on Twitter suggesting that Loic Remy could be coming in from Chelsea on a season-long loan. 
Now, he'd be an amazing player for Wolves in the Championship, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen because he's not a reliable source. But talking about Chelsea as well, another striker linked with us, a young striker who's been scoring lots of goals at that level, is E.K. Ugbo. He's scored lots and lots of goals at youth level. A loan deal has been talked about there, but there are a number of other clubs interested. So that's be interesting to keep tabs on whether or not that deal goes through. And finally, there's still been no interview with Nuno during the pre-season tour, which he did say at the beginning that he wouldn't talk until after the third friendly. And it will be very interesting to hear what he's got to say about what he thinks about the squad and the games at that point. I think it's quite good as well for a manager to not be constantly in the media talking about everything because he puts pressure upon himself then. So we look forward to hearing what he's got to say on Tuesday evening after the final friendly. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and maybe check out some of my other videos from earlier this week or my favourite Wolves goals.